Hi, I'm McFly. I am now living in Rotterdam, as uh, I was nicely introduced to. Um, yeah, I'd like to give, I'm German, but I'd like to give this talk in English, and that has a reason that is actually kind of outside of this conference. I'm living now in the Netherlands and have to deal with those uh, systems a lot more often than you have to deal with those here in Germany. And I'd like to be able to drag the video of the talk under to the nose of some people who think they, they are a good idea. So is anybody having an issue with me having the talk in English? Okay, nice. So let's talk. Um, Short about me, as I was introduced, uh, I used to live in, uh, I studied in Darmstadt, I used to live and work in Hamburg. I now live in uh, Rotterdam, which is in the Netherlands, and in uh, actually really also in Holland. Um, it's pretty nice there. I can recommend it. I can also recommend moving there and working there. Mm, it's a pretty nice environment. Dutch is easier than I thought, even though my Dutch is not very good yet. So, I'm today giving a talk about the automated number plate uh, reading system. So, um, what is that? Um, so, it's automated. That basically says, in this whole process, uh, in the normal case, there is no humans involved. And more and more, also in the more edgy, scale, edgy cases, there are no, no humans involved because there's usually not a lot of humans working there anymore. The number plate, the number plate. The number plate is what the systems focus on. So there are several systems to uh, try to identify um, several objects out there in the wild by the government. Face recognition is another one. Um, possible attacks on uh, RFID cases or so. This focuses on number plates. That is, in this case, really the things in the front of your car. And the recognition. Um, a lot of this technic technology uh, says it's very reliable. Um, I think it's not that easy. So, what what does it do? It basically um, takes a picture of your car that is triggered through a magnetic coil, um, runs OCR software on this picture, and compares that to a database. It's a simplified version for now. What is it used for? Well, this is not always the high-tech law enforcement technology. The police actually has even more fancy systems that depend on multiple cars that have different areas, um, so different light frequency spectrums that they use. This is uh, a solution that is very common for private organizations, so companies, big buildings where you live in, where you share, uh, where you have your parking place directly in the building. Um, and it's also used for uh, parking solutions for the city. So if you want to park your car in Rotterdam, you find a parking place, then you get to one of those poles, and then you enter your number plate in there. And then somebody will check the number plate, like if you have parked. Um, they will validate that against the database. There will be some picture on that. It's used for speed control. Uh, the Austrians have that. Anyone from Austria here? And in the Netherlands, it's very common. I think Switzerland has one of them, and in Germany, they're planning on one of them. And uh, there are general ones for law, for law enforcement uh, when you enter or leave the city. Uh, in Rotterdam, it's very nicely. One of those systems is directly when you leave the city with the Schnellwachen direction of uh, Amsterdam. There's a system that reads the number plates, and like 500 meter later, there's a small side ramp onto the Snellwach, onto the uh, highway, where you very often have police standing. So um, I, um, I'll show you later in the video. I, I made a video 
and I found a developer by that, and that's also one of the solutions they say. So they possibly come after you if they really want to have to you a discussion, and that can be so easy reasons like did you pay your parking tickets, did you pay a packet, uh, your taxes. Or more severe reasons like is there actually the probability that if you have a warrant on your case and your car drives around, the police might want to have a look who's in the car. And it's also used since a short time for uh, enforcing environmental zones. So the, in Germany, there's the Umweltzone. Um, in the Netherlands, there's the Milieuzone. And uh, they also enforce this over those systems. So to give you an idea how that looks, this is a very common company slash private park car, uh, system. There's a call in the ground, there's a camera there, under the camera there is a flashlight that works in the infrared area. You drive there with your car, the call gets triggered, they take a picture. Yeah. This is the other option of parking enforcement by the city. I told you, you enter your number plate into a poll, so it's done in a database. So the city's driving around with those cars. That is from the city of uh, Rotterdam, where I live. And they basically take a picture of every car and every number plate and use this technology to, after that, have a database uh, where cars were parking at what, uh, at what point. And they just check that against the database, who's allowed to park there. Um, and if, you see, you're, if you're standing in a parking area where you need to pay, and this car run to the next pole. I, I was told you have roughly seven minutes. So if you pay seven minutes after, because it also needs to follow the use case of somebody just got off the cars walking to the pole. So if you ever see that, run for the pole and buy a parking ticket. If you have any questions, by the way, feel free to just ask. I'll also take German questions. So, speed control. That's how it looks. There's very nice signs announcing that. The track control has a, is seen to be very precise, so your margin of error you get, what they detect numbers, is uh, not very large. It's like three kilometers per hour. And um, who of you is not living in Germany? Okay, all of the others, you. You live in a happy place. You have no idea how cheap speeding is in Germany. <laughs> One kilometer per, t per hour too fast is roughly as expensive as Germany driving 36 kilometers per hour too fast. Just to put this in a relation, and yes, they sent you sp uh, speeding tickets for one kilometer per hour, which is interesting in a later case. That's how it works te technology-wise. They basically take two, two times to recognize your number plate, write a time stamp next to that, and uh, yeah, the time took you to uh, travel the distant time, distant, the defined distance, um, gives you a pretty precise speed. Those blocks are usually in the area of five kilometers long, so you just have an imagination. I said they use it for enforcing the environmental zones. That is how it looks when you drive over the bridge to Rotterdam. At least was before the environmental zone got into, um, into enforcement. So you're driving past a sign where there's a number plate reader in there that looks in the database when your car's built and which environmental um, emission laws it fulfills. And then the sign tells you if you're allowed to go into the city in some weeks. So you can still quickly buy a new car. They put those up roughly, I'd say, some month before the uh, environmental zone got into uh, enforcement. But yeah, that's the easiness how this data is available also in the Netherlands. So that's a quick database lookup in there in between uh, for the, yeah, what your car can do and what not and how awful it smells. And uh, yep, it directly tells you. From 1st of January, you're still allowed in. Well, 
Why do I care? That's the building I live in and the garage is in the building. And when I want to get my car into the building, that's a symbolic picture, that's not the real entrance. That's basically what I'm driving into. So when I then take my car and drive to work, that's exactly what I'm driving into. So this is, uh, I, I just say very, very common in the Netherlands. Most of IT companies, I'd say more than 50% have so, such solutions. So I, I'm a German and I got a bit annoyed about that. Because, you know, the first question is, how long do you store that? And the answer is, what do you mean? How long do we store that? So when do you delete it? What do you mean, delete? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the building didn't basically didn't really care where I live in. Uh, my company in the beginning also didn't really care. Nobody really cared. The vendor said it's a very secure solution. And um, they're certified actually by TÜV Süd for their solution. So I'm a consultant for a living. So there is those days where you don't have an assignment and you sit around in the office. Right? I tried to talk to the vendor, tried to understand how it works, and they basically answered me, this is like shortened from one page of piece of paper. They basically said, this is very secure, expert tried believe us. And I had kind of issues of actually finding that out that works. So let's see in what you, what you actually can do. So that's how it works. There is a magnetic coil in the ground that uh, makes a camera take a picture. The camera is an infrared picture. Um, it's using an infrared flashlight. So the picture is a flashlight picture that gets underexposed. So you only have the police, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, real thing there. This is then sent to an OCR library who tries to make text out of that. And there is some backend system behind that that processes that. So, to trigger a magnetic coil, you, as everybody knows, who ever had to get out of a parking garage, you need a fire extinguisher, which you can hold over the magnetic coil. I'll show you something about that later. And then you get a picture. That's how those kind of pictures then look. As you can see, the picture is taken with a flashlight. There is some areas who are retro-reflective, that's how it's called and the picture is underexposed, that you can see the areas in the retro-reflective area pretty nicely. And everything else just grays out. Um, this was just a symbolic pic that I couldn't walk past. Um, that's how it will roughly look uh, for the picture that you throw in your CR library. That's not very challenging. It's clear to see where the text area is. Um, and the amount of text is limited that the have to look in there. So OCI extracts number plate from the picture. I don't have a good picture for that because it really isn't very nice to take pictures of Git repositories of OCI libraries, uh, but that's basically what they use there. Um, and after that, something something database, or something something backend, usually something something database. So, number plate. You can see that on the picture a bit. Maybe if you look in the middle, that uh, this is reflective. I tried to take the picture somewhat from the, distance, uh, from the area where the light was coming from. Um, the upper one is masking tape. That was my first try, where I thought really too complicated. Uh, the lower one is Sharpie, but this is already a high quality version of the Sharpie. In later tries, we, I got a bit more, well, relaxed in that. But I just wiped the Sharpie off and tried again. Um, so, um, yeah. 
If you look a bit from the side, the upper one, you can see that there really is some kind of black structure from the masking tape. I sadly have to say that I forgot the original at home, so I can't even show it to you now. Um, the foil in the background is just ordinary warning foils that are used uh, when you kind of paint tracks or put like warning things in tracks. Um, turns out there is a um, recommendation for freight tracks that you kind of should outline your truck with retro reflective foil basically one time around and they give a, a recommendation for the width of that and there is a lower limit and the upper limit and the upper limit is exactly the height of a number plate. So yeah, well. Um, yeah, that was what I had to do there and I promised you So, um, it's a mobile phone video, but you see what I'm doing there basically. I'm holding a cardboard in my hand, what I just showed uh, that has the number plate, and the fire extinguisher in the hand is the car. Um, the cross is pretty much, the coil is in exactly in the middle of the cross as I found out by trying around with that. So that was pretty easy to remember. So you hold it there, trigger the car, and the gate opens. Yep, and there's both of the tries with the Sharpie and the masking tape, but yeah, that's um, roughly as com complicated as it was. Mm. Oh, now we are somewhere. Okay. So I posted that on Twitter and basically really thought that was pretty much stating the obvious, but uh, I found out it wasn't so obvious to everybody, so that's also why people kind of were like, uh, you should ever talk about that. So I'm now having this, and there's a video camera over there, and I don't need to do this again, hopefully. Um, but yeah. Uh, what else can you do? <laughs> this is a famous picture from the internet, but if you want to do this in your garage, that's not a good approach. Because you should try something like oh, 1 equals 1 because otherwise it's really hard to verify because the only feedback from the system that you get is uh, does the door open or not. Which is already some interesting information like I have a colleague which I explained this to uh, who tried to write me a database uh, query that tried to bitwise morse the content of the database by opening the door or not out of the system that actually would work but we didn't get an SQL injection working, which is a bit sad, um, but yeah. Multiple number plates. Multiple number plates throws up the system. If you have two number plates, the door doesn't open, which is too sad if you have to deal with a parking garage, but why do have truck drivers all of their number plates in their front screen, I always wondered. So if you throw our software with multiple number plates against it, especially if it doesn't say a number plate, just some random text string who really isn't a number plate, um, then the software doesn't work anymore. And the color of the number plate on else doesn't make, the, you don't need that. Because it's infrared pictures, it's just like it doesn't see color. Number plate. So, 
This works above the point that you have retroreflective foil there, right? So if you have white retroreflective foil and put your stickers with no ri white retroreflective non-foil on there, that works. Problem for me was that it's rather complicated to take a picture of that. <laughs> so, and I, yeah. But yeah, this is a nice approach. You can make this more complicated, which I haven't tried, but I would kind of challenge people to, because the foil that you have for this retroreflective is available in like 29 different colors. And the exact precise same 29 different colors are also available in non retroreflective foil. So, anyone of you has a, a cutting plotter, that uh, might be an interesting approach. I'm pretty sure you can this way. Um, get things that, see, that the computer can see, but the human walking die on the broad, uh, past on the broad daylight can't see. It's just white on white or colorful in colorful, but the sensor looks in a different frequency spectrum than the eye, and so you can have selective information. One just goes to, do you get my point, right? So, this is the end of this talk. You have some questions. I want to give some shout outs. One of them is to your fix, who isn't precisely uh, well to get better. And the other one is to my hackerspace in Rotterdam, which is called the Pixel Bar. There's a Twitter account for that that's called Pixel Bar 010, which is the phone code for Rotterdam. Um, if you want to follow that, and yeah, questions. Because no one of you has questions. You have a question. Did you try using a really strong infrared uh, light uh, that shines upwards to confuse the camera? Um, yeah, already the normal, if you go up there the wrong way to the reader and your, uh, your normal car light already shines in the camera, then it's already over. You don't even need a specialized infrared equipment, just your normal car light already works. And that can be if you drive on there in a special angle, you sometimes get in the situation that you're blinding the camera, so that's, the sensors are not super high quality. There's not a lot of snow in Rotterdam, and so I don't know how that happens then. Um, yeah, the vendor tells you the sensor should better not stand uh, where it rains. I don't know if that has to do with picture quality or I'm not sure if it's uh, waterproof. Any more questions? Oh, that depends on the system and in the Netherlands in general the answer is yes, they store the data. Uh, our house has discovered, I think, four weeks ago that there is new legislation that's called GDPR, which I kind of pointed them to. So at the moment, I'm just finding out that storing number plates, which is private data according to the European court, is not so easy anymore. But yeah, I wonder how it works when you, when you drive in something, withdraw the con consent to store and process the data and then try to drive out or so. But yeah, there will be, um, privacy is not a thing for them. As said in my house, uh, per default, the system just stores forever, the system that we have in our house. And it also stores the successful attempts, which it doesn't need to, actually, if you think about this. Um, when using the um, double number plates in the pictures, could you, in theory, if used in Germany, use regular expressions, or is the problem just the double plates? You mean when I have multiple plates and the OCR software throws way more content back to the next processing step than this processing step expected? That very much depends on the implementation. Um, there is one implementation which is an older system which we're not having anymore at my work. Um, 
sadly they changed this already before I started looking in there because the old software was built on a, I think, Windows 2003 server and required a MySQL for Windows 3 something and that just smelled very broken but sadly they replaced that before I uh, was allowed to play with that. Okay, um, could you or could we uh, use this to uh, make a, a shadow uh, model railroad uh, train identification system <laughs> <Lord>. out of this? <laughs> Maybe. So is there another question? So while talking about it, I very often found one question, so I actually prepared this answer to GPT. That's what you want to look for if you want to Google for it. It took me like a day to find out this name. So I'm saving you the time. That stuff's super cheap. It's actually s sold in square meters. So when you buy that from the company, the, they sell you 1.22 meters wide. And the shortest the machine can cut is one meter. And they didn't have a price for only one meter, so when I asked the company, they actually sent it to me as a sample, and I only had to pay the shipment. So, I just would recommend every hackerspace to have like two square meters to just and have your hackerspace to play around with it whenever you have the feeling that you should. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. A round of applause, please.